Hi everybody and welcome to Cook with Hope. Today I've asked Dr. Suchetan Pradhan to tell us a little bit about the way forward now that the lockdown has been lifted, what we can do to protect ourselves and also how we can self-quarantine. Thank you so much Suchetan for coming on and talking to us. Thanks Nandini for having me uh, on board and yeah, it's been a trying time, right? Isn't it for the last three months? The whole world has gone topsy-turvy, upside down. If I had said to you three and a half months back that I would expect you to be sitting at home, um, locked down without being able to go out, meet your friends, talk to people, except over the telephone or, or, or online, um, you would have said you're completely crazy. And well, here we are. Um, but of course, everything, uh, this too shall pass. Yeah. And so we hope that in the very near future, we should be able to get rid of all the anxiety, the stress, and uh, the real fear of infection that we had in, the, in, in this in the very difficult times. So yeah, it's been, it's been very trying. And what is going to happen post the lockdown? So there are two questions that we have to answer for you today. What is going to happen after the lockdown uh, is over? And two is what if we do get the disease? Yeah. And we have to quarantine. You know, what are the uh, options that we have? So let's look at first, what is COVID? I think it's very important to understand that uh, COVID is a virus. Uh, first things first, 85% of people who get infected with COVID are completely asymptomatic. And so therefore, the mortality rates are extremely low. So the reason the cause for panic is not real. And it is also uh, a lot driven by what we call the WhatsApp space. Okay? Yeah. Because people look at messages and they get scared looking yeah. at that. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, just one thing, you can interrupt mm -hmm. me at any time if you want. Okay, if you want to ask me something. Or yeah. what, what do, otherwise, I'll keep talking. So that's what we call the WhatsApp space. So don't listen to, to everything that happens on WhatsApp space. A lot of those are fake messages. A lot of them are not even real. So please sift out through what is real and what's fake and then believe what is happening. So yes, COVID is very infective and that's the reason why we are so locked in uh, for the last few, few months. What will happen once the lockdown gets over? And by the way, COVID is not a death sentence, okay? Because there are a lot of people, 85% are asymptomatic out of those other 15%, mainly all of, most of them are mildly symptomatic. And out of those severely symptomatic patients, a very, very small percentage of people, mainly the aged and people with comorbidities like diabetes, like hypertension, like other comorbidities, those are the people who are at risk. Anybody who's had lung disease, anybody who's had kidney disease, you know, the kind of people who are at risk. So one has to understand that we have to protect the elderly and those with comorbidities, but you do not have to fear for people who are healthy. Yes. So that's, that's something that we have, we have to understand. Mm -hmm. But we have to protect those people who are susceptible and to protect them, our right. We must do that properly. And that's why the reasons for the lockdown. So now that the lockdown is going to get over, how do we still protect these people? So what will happen when the lockdown gets over? Now what you're seeing, pictures of people crowding buses um, and all that. By the way, I just drove today um, outside of Mumbai. And I must tell you that, that it was a very uh, heartening sight to see that the buses had social distancing. Okay. Lovely. So... Uh, Hope, and I hope that this continues and that we, and if that happens, we won't see a, a sort of another spike that comes, a secondary infect, infection spike. Otherwise, what we will see is that as people go out in, into the marketplace again, you will see that the spike of infections will go up. So please do not think that the infective phase of the virus is over. It is very much present even today. So you have to take the same precautions that you've been taking so far. And that means you will be masked 
That's very, very important. You will gain social distancing. That's again, very, very important. And you will protect the, the, the elderly and the comorbid of people who have some kind of, uh, uh, you know, a di disease that they are carrying. So those people you will protect by not exposing them to people who go out in the workplace. So keep them isolated and that way you will uh, save them from getting infected and therefore uh, having any severe uh, problems with the infection. So that is, I think, as far as the lockdown goes, we have to stop the lockdown because economically otherwise, you know, already a lot of people are suffering. A lot of the smaller companies will have to shut down. There will be huge numbers of unemployment and that will cause, that could lead to, lead to social unrest, of course, one. And two, it could lead to a lot of economic strife, strife and stress. Yeah. So that's again something that the government has done. Um, they're opening up. And it's a good thing that they are opening up. They're allowing people to go back and into their routines and also being able to generate uh, incomes for themselves and their families. Otherwise, it could be a, a disaster. Yeah. So you've got to be very careful as you go for, forwards from this phase because when we open up, again, you will get in touch with people. So social distancing is very important. What we've learned so far, washing your hands, using sanitizers, wearing a mask, even wearing a shield in public. Don't feel, don't feel ashamed to wear that because if that will protect you, it's going to protect your loved ones and, uh, and people at home as well. So that's, uh, that's what will happen after the lockdown gets over. So that's the first thing. Anything else you want me to add on to this? You know, any questions that you may have? No, I think right now, I think right now what the, what the fear is and the questions that I'm seeing everywhere is that people want to know what happens if they get it and they have to self-quarantine. What happens if they need oxygen at home? Uh, you know, how, how can they look after themselves at home if this happens? Yes. So that's, that's again something that we'll have to consider very seriously. And the ICMR and the government of Maharashtra have also issued SOPs and guidelines for these. Um, because what is happening is that, like I said, 80%, 85% of the people are asymptomatic. But if they test positive, they are still infective and they can infect people around them. So if you have and you've tested yourself positive and you do tend, tend to be positive, don't panic. The first step is not to panic. You have to understand that we don't want people with very mild symptoms or very less symptoms to get admitted to hospitals because they will clog up the hospital beds which should be kept available for the more serious patients. You know, people who need um, oxygen, uh, oxygenation, uh, who need uh, a ventilator support. So those are the patients that will need to be in hospitals. So, or other, or if you don't have an isolation area in your house or in your society, wherein, wherein you would be isolated properly with your own uh, bathroom and, 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 and facilities like that. Because if you're going to use a common bathroom in, uh, with other members of your household, then that is going to be a bit of an issue. But even then, it's very possible to do it. So the first criteria you will have is, do you have isolation facilities in your house that you can isolate yourself properly? Or because the whole cost disease is 14 days approximately. First, normally in the first five to seven days, most people are asymptomatic. And then they start developing some form of symptoms like fever, like body ache, like coughs, like sneezing, like colds and you know headaches so when if you get those symptoms please get yourself tested once you're tested positive and it's a mild form of the disease today there are a lot of hospitals which are offering home care delivery services as well okay. so is offering it uh, 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 hn hospital alliance hn hospital is offering it and i think in the very near future a lot of the other hospitals will be also offering these services. 
So make sure that you are in contact with a physician. That's the first thing that you must understand. Do not try to do this on your own. Talk to a doctor because two things will happen there. You will get confidence and you will not panic. Mm. So please make sure that you talk. Even if it's your own GP, what you need in your house is very, very essential to understand. So if you're going to self-isolate yourself at home, you will need a temperature measurement device, a thermometer. Either it could be the old-fashioned thermometers or the guns that you get now. You also need, very importantly, what is known as a pulse oximeter, which measures the oxygen saturation uh, in your body. And this is extremely vital to maintain the course of the disease. Okay? So after five to seven days, your symptoms may, may regress. And, and very importantly, if you lose your sense of taste and smell, then you must get yourself tested. It's extremely important to understand that. And again, if you test positive and you're very mildly symptomatic, please talk to your doctor. Don't self-medicate yourself. Yes. Because a lot of people, it's very important to understand this because people are talking about hydroxychloroquine as a treatment modality. They're talking about other remdesivirs. Of course, you can't take remdesivir because it's, that's IV. But without doctors, you can, you can take a simple thing like paracetamol. Yeah. You can take steam inhalations. You can take vitamin C, vitamin D. You can take zinc supplements. You know, all of these things you can do. Okay? So all of this you must keep in your house. Do that. And then talk to a doctor. Keep it. Keep yourself monitored. Isolate yourself in a room. Shut the room door. Don't allow anybody to enter because your room will have the viral particles present and the viral load will be present in that room. So keep it out. You will have to clean the room yourself. Hopefully you'll be able to manage that. If you're mildly symptomatic, it's not a problem. Yeah. And then people will give you food outside. If, there's a family, if your family is there, then they will keep the food outside. You'll just take it in, you eat it, you'll uh, rinse the utensils and keep it out. The family will have to be very careful when they are cleaning the utensils. That's all. They'll have to wear gloves. And the mask can clean it and keep it back uh, for you. So that's self-isolation. What you will do is every day you will measure your temperature and you'll measure your pulse oximeter reading. So you just, it's a very simple device which clips on top of your finger. So when it lips on top, it will give you a reading. Any reading above 95%, which means that you have no problems. You're safe. Okay? So your temperature, most people have mild fever. Some people have high fever. Make sure that you just, again, talk to your doctor and take the medication prescribed by him. But paracetamol is very safe to take. Okay? So 100 milligrams of paracetamol three times a day is, is, is very safe to take. It's not a problem. But again, please consult your doctor when you do this. Okay? If you have a room with a television, you can watch television. But please don't, let me tell you, don't watch channels that talk about COVID. Okay? It's frightening. All they're talking and about don't is how WhatsApp. <laughs> admitted to hospitals and what they're doing and what they're suffering. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. you're better off watching uh, Netflix or, or, or Amazon Prime or other, you know, other Indian channels that are showing you, uh, you know, movies or whatever it is. Yeah. But also, learn to meditate. It's very important that you do alternative therapies for yourself. So you are going to, and, and hydrate yourself well, because you don't want to be in a situation where you get dehydrated. So yeah. keep drinking a lot of water and that will keep you well hydrated. Okay, do not panic because the doctor who's there and your family members are there. You're just in the room, out in, 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 in your own house. You're in the room, so it's, there's a lot of comfort level that you have. Yeah. Okay, be positive about your thoughts. Um, so, you know, we were on, on a webinar yesterday um, with Dr. Joshi, and he said that think of this as Vipassana. Yes. You know, Vipassana, you can yourself. So think of this as Vipassana, only this is Vipassana with a slight fever or a slight cough or a slight cold, you know, that kind of a stuff. So do, do meditation, 
do yoga if you're doing yoga do do your regular exercises walk around and as the time goes by the 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 symptoms may increase or may slowly decrease if they decrease you're absolutely safe after the 10th day your viral load starts coming down and your infectiveness to your family members also around you will come down but please isolate yourself for 14 days to be absolutely safe okay, okay? Yeah. if your fever is increasing and your symptoms are increasing then what you will do is again measure your temperature and your pulse oximetry levels there is also a test that you can do very simple test it's a walking test uh, which has been described by dr rahul pandit and dr joshi it's called happy hypoxia test so what you do is you walk you measure your pulse oximeter before you walk then you walk for 6 minutes just a regular walking pace and you measure your oximeter your pulse uh, i mean your oxygen saturation again with the pulse oximeter if you had 95% plus to begin with and then your pulse oximeter is showing below 93 or 92 please call up your doctor you need to be admitted to a hospital so that's a very good indication of when you need to be admitted to a hospital and please keep your doctor in the loop so in case you need to start any other medication like uh, 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 hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin again there are a lot of drug interactions that happen which could be potentially harmful to you so please do not take it without doctor's advice yes so calm yourself down enjoy your space that you have with yourself yeah. you may not ever be able to do this again in your life so yeah. so if you don't have very severe symptoms if you're mildly symptomatic or very low symptomatic then i think think of this as an opportunity to introspect to vipassana and 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 be zen about the whole thing and the experience and most importantly don't panic if you feel panic you can talk to your family members over the phone or your doctors or your friends over the phone and i'm sure there are wonderful people like you nandini who will be able to help um, distress people because what is really a problem for the for the healthcare workers is when patients panic then they don't have rationality and they make decisions and mistakes that may cost them in in, in the short term okay um so so again uh, the, the the question is given to us us uh, ask uh, to us very often is do i keep an oxygen cylinder in my house yes and at what point do you do that um i would not recommend you keeping an oxygen cylinder in your house unless you actually need it and then if you are in touch with a doctor and i'll tell you why because if you keep oxygen so everybody everybody in bombay and you know we are holders Indians yes, are holders. You yes. tell some people in the entire your house, there'll be no oxygen left in the, the entire world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the patients won't have any oxygen. Yeah. All of them will be lying in people's houses, yeah. and they're just looking at it and do it every day. So that's not a not a solution. Also, mm -hmm. delivery of that system is not that easy. You have to monitor that as well. So mm -hmm. there, if you need oxygen, oxygenation. you you are you are in touch with the doctor and you and if you take one of these packages with the which, which the hospitals are offering it's a very good idea or your doctors are going to do it yeah. they will be in touch with you and if you need an oxygen either a concentrator or an oxygen uh, oxygenation with a cylinder then the doctors will automatically provide it to you these hospitals are also providing home nursing services okay. so it's not as if you no know, everybody is abandoning you So don't, can you mention these hospitals that. again? Can you mention these hospitals again? Yeah, so I know that H N Reliance is is definitely doing it, and I believe Vocard is doing it as well. But I may be wrong on that. Okay. But definitely H N Reliance is doing it. Okay. I've seen their flyers on that, and I think other hospitals will join in the very near future. You can again check the list of hospitals. and if you want and then i can send i can also find out the hospitals of any any more and send please, you a list please because i will you know. put it with this um i keep updating this okay yes i will definitely do that 
Thank you so okay, so much. Any... Thank you. No, I don't have any questions. I really like what you said. Do not self-medicate. Call your doctor. Do not panic. Uh, and it's a wonderful way that you have put it across to us. Thank you very much. I think we'll Thank all you, learn Lani. a lot from this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it helps everybody. And keep, keep safe. And again, do not panic. It is not a death sentence. We can overcome this if we all fight it together. We don't want to crowd hospitals because we need to leave the hospitals for this, for the, for this, at least the moderately ill and the severely ill. Yes. So please ensure that you don't clock those beds. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.